And I wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day today. If you had a good, godly father, thank the Lord for it. And if you didn't, uh, thank the Lord for it anyway. Amen. Because um, Amen. we are commanded to honor our father and mother, and it doesn't give any qualifications for that. Um, we're just to do it. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we'd ask you to turn to 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 8, and we're going to begin reading in the first verse, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8, and uh, I think it was Wednesday night, uh, we moved forward and we are going to the Ham Festival this year and just kind of see what's going to happen um, with our uh, work uh, going to parade festivals, so we'll see. Uh, 1 Samuel 8, and we're going to begin reading in the very first verse. 1 Samuel, uh, in the first verse, the Bible says this, And it came to pass, when Samuel was old, that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of the firstborn was Joel, or Joel, and the name of the second, Abiah, and they were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre, and took bribes, and perverted judgment. And all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together, and came to Samuel unto Ramah, and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we give you great glory and honor for just sitting on the throne this morning and doing what seemeth good unto thyself. God, we know separate and apart from you, there's no, no hearing from you, uh, just dryness and coldness and deafness. But thank God through the person of the Holy Ghost, we can understand you, feel your presence and, under, uh, and hear your word as a living word and we give you great praise for that. Honor thy word with thy spirit this morning and we'd be faithful to give you the praise for it. For it is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Now, maybe some not so familiar verses and uh, if you do know your historic Bible though, you know that um, two things, this was a, a beginning spot of Israel, but it was not a good beginning right. spot. Right. They were never to have a king. Uh, it was not God's plan for them to have a king. Their government was a theocracy, meaning they were ruled by God. And so going after what they were going for was going for the world. Now, one thing they did have was a group of judges, and that's what the book of Judges is about. And the purpose of the judges was to interpret God's law and say, this is what applies, and this is what you are to do according to the Word of God. Right. Now, that is just like our judicial branch in the United States of America. But if you follow, and I'm not a big politician, but I do, I do not like my freedom stripped from me either. And if you follow what they're doing, they're out of their place and they're making laws instead of interpreting laws. Mm -hmm. And that is not their purpose. That is not what they were designed for, nor were the judges in that day. And, and we see that they're going to get into a problem uh, because of the judge's role were violated. And it came to pass when Samuel was old. Now, let me warn you young people, uh, be careful when you get old. Now, as my dear son Matthew always likes to point out, I'm past my middle age period. And he's right, to be middle age now, I'd have to be to live to be 106. And uh, I don't think that that's going to happen with the normal course of man. But I will say this, there are changes that come with age that don't make you better, they make you weaker. That's right. And I don't mean physically, I don't, which that comes to, and it's not a pleasant part of aging. But if you're not very careful, you'll be leaning toward compromise. Mm-hmm. 
you'll be leaning uh, towards saying, well, you know, uh, yes, that's true, but... And there's no much to it. It's either true or it's not true. And, and, you know, look around this morning and we have about, I don't know, 17 here. And it would be very easy to compromise and fill this building. But you know what? Filling buildings is not the ministry of Christ. Uh, the ministry of Christ is to be uh, adhering to the Word of God. And so we find that uh, they're at a critical point in their history. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now, uh, be careful when you prefer your family and immediately jump to your family as the best candidate. Now, I personally do not think he was using, uh, in fact, uh, it doesn't record that he prayed, does it? Uh, it doesn't record that he sought the face of God. It just says that he appointed him. You know what? Before we do anything as a church, we need to seek the face of God. We, we need to be sure it's his will and not our will. And so we don't see anything about seeking the will of God, anything about prayer. He just appoints his sons to work in his stead. Now, the name of the firstborn was Joel, and the name of the second, Abiah, and they were judges in Beersheba. Now, I, I don't suppose that really matters, but it certainly wasn't where Samuel lived. And it was before the appointment of Jerusalem as the capital city. And that's why uh, I, I say that maybe it wasn't uh, anything wrong with it, but this I do see wrong with it. Samuel never trained on them. He never said, this is how you be a good judge. Right. The, the, this is how you refer to the law of God, and this is how you make decisions according to this law. We see no training whatsoever. You know what we need with our young preachers? We don't know. We don't need education from A to Z. They need to learn by example. Mm -hmm. Now, there's nothing wrong with education, and I think being knowledgeable of the Bible is critical. But at the same time, and listen, I, I've been a nurse a long time application and, and you know I read about nursing for three years really before I practiced and, and what I learned clinically actually sticking a needle in and, and, and learn how to do an assessment and say man this person's going downhill is watching other people mm -hmm. and that is the best way to do it and, and so we find that um Samuel just kind of pushes them off to themselves and lets them do their own thing, and we see the results. And his sons not uh, walked not in his, meaning Samuel's, ways, but turned aside after lucre. Now, money can mess you up. Is it wrong for a pastor to be successful? No. Uh, if you can support a pastor full time, I think you're obligated to. But listen, don't let that be the king peg. Don't let that be the decision on how you make it. Don't 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 let that be the man you choose just because. Uh, uh, and the reverse is true too. Uh, uh, boys, don't take a church just because they can float you. You see what I'm saying? Right. And, and so we see then, uh, we as the Lord's people, we need to be very cautious about that because we see in the era that they were, they were, they were led away by money and took bribes and perverted or made obscene or made wrong judgment. You know, uh, a real judge just takes the law and applies it. Uh, if you go on past 55, you get a ticket. Very easy to understand, ain't it? But they come up to you, and again, I'm not complaining, <laughs> or maybe I should. I was uh, I was going to work one day, and I was exceeding the speed limit, and you know what? That's breaking the law, right? <clears throat> and I pulled over when the cops saw me because I was like, here, here you go, and you know, wasn't nothing I could say. I, you know, guilty. And um, 
he saw my badge, uh, my name tag from the nursing home, and he was a retired veteran. And I thought, uh, and he said, well, I'm gonna let you go because you'll be taking care of me someday, but don't let this happen again. And you know, I didn't go, I wanna pay the ticket. I, I mean, I'll take good care of you, but I wanna pay the ticket anyway. Uh, but that was the law, wasn't it? You see, uh, the law doesn't change, does it? Right. Even today, the law of God still exists. Right. And, and, and so we find then uh, what these boys were doing was not honoring the law, but rather perverting the law and making something that was flexible. That's what we're getting at to the time. Making it flexible to the age that they lived. Verse 4, Then the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel under Ramah, and again, two different towns, not being trained. And they said, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the, all the nations. Now, what they wanted was to be like the world. Yeah. What they wanted was to have a king because every other nation around them had a king and had a king that made decisions and had a king that uh, apparently they thought did things right when that wasn't God's plan. Right. Now, all of us, the, the, uh, and she's more of a figurehead in the modern day. Everybody knows Queen Elizabeth II. And you see her, and she looks elegant. She's 95 years old now. She still carries herself very stately and, and, and uh, does what they consider a great job. But that's not God's plan. We have a president of the United States. He's voted in. They're voted in and voted out on a routine basis. But that's not God's plan. If that's true and we embrace the Word of God, what is the only biblical part of our government? The judges. Right? We have a judicial branch as well, correct? Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing that really should be uh, writing. And then those judges should, should seek the face of God. That's how it should be done. But they wanted to be like everybody else. You know, I think we live in a day that's the same for the church, don't you? Uh, I, I watch these supposed churches uh, today in modern society, and listen, they're in, they're in a mess. They'll take anything with a pulse. And they want to entertain people and have rock music and then call, give it the name unto Christ. Listen, God's not within a thousand miles of it. But you know what the result is? They're building new buildings. Big enough to uh, fit a, a mall into it. You know what? It's going to. That's not success. Now, that's what we've been taught is success, but that is not success. So, in the modern day, as we sit here and, and, and we see time go by, what our real desire should be is not the things that the that the world has to offer, not being like them, but rather be pleasing to God. Uh, notice verse six. But the thing, the demanding of the king, the desire to be like the rest of the world, but the thing displeased Samuel. And they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they've rejected me. Now, can you imagine uh, openly and, and wholeheartedly rejecting the things of God? Rejecting God's plan. What was his plan? A judicial form of government, right? With him at the very head. They rejected that and said, we're going to do it our way. Now, before you get down on these two boys, Joel and Abiha, we do it every day ourselves, don't we? We reject God's plan. You know what? Every one of us, under the sound of my voice, there's a plan under God for your life. And the very most important thing you can do is find out what that plan is, get into the will of God, and follow it with everything that you got. 
But they refused. They wanted to be like the world. Why do you not have preaching on dress today? Because they want to be like the world. Well, why do you not have people preaching that the women ought to be keepers at home? They're not there to support their old men. They're there to be supported. Not popular preaching. That's when you get crickets, right? But it is what the Bible teaches, is it not? Right. Not popular. In the, and, and you know what? If you stick with that book, this is going to be about it. You're not building a new building. You're not. Yeah, and, and I've heard people say time and time again, well, uh, we don't know when the end time is coming. And I'll give you wholeheartedly that. That's the very gospel truth. But I do know this. Uh, that peach tree out there is bearing peaches as we speak, waiting for the squirrels to come and get them, right? And uh, we uh, we can see that that's a, pre a peach tree because it's got peaches on it. You know what? The Bible says this, the end cannot come except there be a great falling away. Right? You think the end's coming? I do. Uh, it's just like Jarrett was teaching about this filthy, ungodly day we live in where men's marrying men and women marrying women and, 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 and a woman pretending to be a man and a man pretending to be a woman and all this filth. You know what? It's got to be close. Right? right? Mm -hmm. I would to God it's close. Uh, <laughs> and so, don't be a dumb. Right? And, and, and so we see in this day they rejected the plan of God for government and really <laughs> rejected the plan of God for their lives. And so, verse 6 I mean, excuse me, verse 8, according to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them, uh, 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 highlighting their history of disobedience, God says, according to all that the works which they have done since the day I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, how be it, Yet protest solemnly unto them, show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Now, uh, you know, it's a bad day sometime when God gives you what you want, ain't it? Mm -hmm. He said, Samuel, I'm going to give them exactly what they want, but you tell them it's wrong. Preachers, <laughs> When we see all the filth in this world, you know what we need to keep doing? Telling them it's wrong. That's it. Right? Are you going to change it? Probably not. But you tell them it's wrong. Uh, say, that's disgusting in the sight of God. That's filth. That, that is nasty in the things of God. Don't do that. Or are they going to listen and say, oh man, you're right. Let, let, uh, I can't believe I didn't see that before. Probably not. But tell them anyway. What what does the Bible say concerning those sin in, in Romans chapter one? It said God gives them over to a reprobate mind. Absolutely. Does it not? Mm -hmm. It wasn't them. <laughs> Man can do nothing of himself. It's a God give them over to a reprobate mind. And, and, and so we find then, uh, he says, well, I'm going to fix Israel's wagon, but you still stand for the truth. It's not, you know what? It, it's a hard thing, preacher boys, when God says directly, you stick to the stuff, but it ain't going to do no good. <laughs> Man, that, that's pretty decimal preaching, is it not? But he said to do it, isn't it? He, he, he said, now, Sammy, you, you stick to the stuff, but they're going to get them a king. They want a king, and they're going to get one. Uh, verse 10. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, this will be the manner of the king that, thou shall, that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself. Now, what does that mean? This is their king. This is their big idea. And, and you just say, uh, 
Uh, Adam wasn't married when he was 21 yet, I don't think. I'm, I'm pretty certain he wasn't. I think he was still at home, pretty certain. He may have moved out when he was 20. But can you imagine and coming into the house, uh, the government, because that's what they were, the king saying, now from now on, Matthew and Adam are mine. And them getting out and just having to go with him. Well, uh, you know what? They, uh, they might have said that, but I have a little 410 shotgun and a pistol that might say something different. Right? And I might have got my head blowed off, but at least I'd have died trying. You see what I'm saying? That was their plan. Okay, yeah. Here's my boys. You do whatever you want to with them. How stupid. Well, that, that, that's the very same that public school system's all about. <coughs> Here's my young ones. You do whatever you want to with them. <laughs> well, you'll stand before the Almighty and give a better answer than that than saying, well, it's just the best I could do. Notice what else his, his plan for them was. And appoint them himself for his chariots and to be his horsemen. And some run before the chariots. In other words, right on the very front line so they can get killed real easy. And he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties and will set them and set them to ear his ground, which means you go listen, uh, you go see what's happening to reap the harvest and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots. And in effect, they would be slaves. And we will take your daughters to be confectioners. In other words, you, you, they get Sarah to be a baker. They get Bella to be a cook. And there was no choice about it. Can you imagine an economy like that where your children was the government's? Uh, sound familiar? Mm -hmm. And he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. Lose everything you got. And he will have the tenth part of your seed and of your vineyards and give unto his officers. In other words, you're going to feed the army and to his servants. He will, and he will take your men servants and your maiden servants, excuse me, your maid servants and your good, goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. And he shall cry out in that day, and ye shall cry out in that day because of your king, which ye have chosen, which ye have chosen you. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. Now, he says, We're going to break you completely. And you're going to say, Oh Lord, we made a mistake. And he said, I'm not listening to you. You know, sometimes I wonder how churches that err so far from the truth think they're doing God a service. Well, the reason is this, is they're not hearing from God. Right. God's not listening, and, 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 he's, and he's done with them. And so there, there's no interaction, no, no, uh, no uh, hearing from God whatsoever. Verse, um, verse 19, this is the sickening part. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us. Mm -hmm. they, they, he, he laid it out completely even to the point that the, the, the government was going to own their boys and girls and do whatever they said, and, and they said, Listen, I don't care. I want a king. Have you ever been in the point, and I think if we was real honest, that we disregarded the word of God because we wanted what we wanted. <coughs> right? I don't think there's a one under the sign of my voice that, ooh, I've never done that. Well, you have a different flesh than I do. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and so we find that the the worldly standard is really what they wanted. They wanted a king because everybody else had a king. And in the application of the day, if everybody has a three-bedroom house, I want a three-bedroom house. And if everybody has a four-bedroom house with two-and-a-half baths, I want one, too. 
We want what the world has, do we not? We do. You say, oh, Brother Larry, that's harsh. Well, it's the nature of man, is it not? It's our flesh to the T. And, and, and so what we have to learn is that it is carnal desire and that it is fleshly desire that, that is not something we ought to be involved with and then get, begin to reject. Verse 21, uh, verse 20, excuse me. That we also may be like all the nations. Man, I want to be like everybody else. Let me give you an example. The United Kingdom, uh, uh, the British, Isle, the nations of the British Isles, you know how long they've had sodomite marriage around uh, close to 30 years? Oh, I want to be like them, don't you? You think these national conferences of all the nations are just there to be there? If you do, you need to head examined. I want to be like them. I, I mean... They, 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 they have it so good. I want to be socialistic because I'm set on my tail and do nothing and, and have what the neighbor has and he's working like a dog. Right? That's socialism for you. But let me say this about socialism. It's this far from communism. And it don't take much to go over the fence. And, and so we find then that this is not a new, uh, not not a new uh, uh, philosophy of man, and it's not, uh, it, and we see it so prevalently today that we miss it all together. So where did we come to say, oh well, we're going to let women marry women and men marry men? They've been doing it in other nations for years. I want to be like them, right? That's it. Keep up with the Joneses. And Samuel heard all the words of the people and he rehearsed them in his ears uh, and he rehearsed them in the ears of the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, hearken unto their voice, make them a king. And Samuel said unto the men of Israel, go ye every one unto his city. And so they relented and said, this is what, <laughs> you're gonna get what you want. Now, uh, 1 Samuel 9, I just want to read the first two verses. Now, there was a, uh, a man of the, uh, and now, now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Bekothrath, the son of Aphiah, a Benjaminite, a mighty man of power. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man and a goodly. And there and, and there was not among and there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders upward, he was higher than all his people. Now here's a picture of what the world chooses. Now, I want you to see first of all, it says he was a choice young man. He was good looking. He was attractive. When, when he walked by, it turned the ladies' heads. He was something to see. You know what? In the carnality of the flesh, this world is something to see. Is it not? Yeah. It's appealing. It's, it, it, it's a marvel. I use this example uh, when I was doing home health and I couldn't drive, sometimes the boys would take me to my visits and sometimes Rita, my secretary, would take me to my visits. And Rita, all y'all know her, she's fun to be around. She's a little bit scared, she's scared of everything. And uh, there was a, a house that I had written down and we had the address and I said, I think it's the word said, and it's down there past our house toward the lake. And you turn on this little gravel road and then you go up a hill and the road gets more and more and more narrow. And finally there was trees on both sides and me and Rita sitting in the middle in her little Ford Focus. And she, Larry, where are we going? I said, well, according to this, we're going in the right direction. I don't know, Larry. I'm like, well, we'll just keep going. And all of a sudden it opened up 
and there were five mansions on the riverfront, like 6,000 square foot homes. And she really says, wait, oh. <laughs> and uh, we, we, we got through. And we got to the right house, and I, I did my work. And came out. Now, um, and that was appealing, wasn't it? Now, most of y'all know I've always wanted a house on the main channel. And the, these five houses was right on. In fact, the first time I saw them, there was a barge going down the river. I went, what? Oh, man, that's, that's nice. And I'm going home down the street to a double wide. Right? That's appealing to the flesh, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's that, that's something uh, that that we want, is it not? Well, that was Saul, something that they wanted. Now, I don't know how much how tall Jewish people were. Uh, I, I've seen Jews from this tall to this tall, so I don't know what the average Jew was. But this man was like this. I'm five foot nine. Used to be five foot ten. Started shrinking a little bit. So head and shoulders above me would be a man probably seven foot or more. That's a big guy. But you know what? Deep down, Saul was a coward. He was. See, we don't need to look on the outer man. We need to look on the inner man. And, and see what makes him tick and, and, and see what makes him just make decisions and, and, and see where his, his, his love really lies. Now you know the rest of the story of Samuel and how he would go downhill with time. Uh, I want to read one more set of verses and we're going to close. Samuel chapter 13 and verse 8. Samuel chapter 13 and uh, verse 8. The Bible says this, and he carried seven days to set time that Sam, to the set time that Samuel had appointed. Now he means Saul. Now in the economy, since they had demanded a king and they got a king, and his office was to lead the armies. That was all he was to do. Remember David, when David wasn't just doing his job, he looked up there and, and saw Bathsheba. And you know what that lady, you know what that really was? If he wasn't doing his job. Right. Mm -hmm. If he'd been on the battlefield, that would have never happened, right? right. And, and, and so we see that this is a very much an, inst uh, an instance where Samuel was not doing his job. Now, what had happened, excuse me, Saul, was not doing his job. What had Samuel had said, I'll be there in about a week. That's waiting on the Lord, right? What's the Bible say? Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he will strengthen your soul. Didn't say he'd strengthen your body, did he? Said he'd strengthen your soul. Wait, I say wait on the Lord. Man, it's the hardest thing you'll ever do. We're an instantaneous generation, are we not? I often think of my mother and Brother Junior. They started out on wood cook stoves. Both of them born within three. My, my grandparents didn't have electricity in the 50s. And you know what? It took a while to get a meal beer. Now, uh, this morning, Donna fixed me a waffle. Pretty good. You know how long it took her to get the waffle ready? Two minutes. In the day of my grandmother, you know, which they didn't have waffles, they would have pancake. She built the fire. She got the stove warm enough. She got the flour out. She got the sugar out. She got the milk. After someone, it was usually my mother, milked the cow. Mixed it all up. Put it in the and put it on the stove and cook it real slow. It, it, it wasn't, you know, we 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 turned her up to about eight or nine and whoop, we we've got a good. You know what? A hot fire takes a little while to build, don't it? And then probably within an hour or so, there the pancake would be. We've been spoiled on instantaneous, have we not?
And Saul was the same way, and he had waited his week out, and he was impatient. And listen, he wasn't really impatient on Saul, I mean Samuel. Who was he really impatient on? God. He was impatient on the great God Jehovah. Just be patient. So he says, and he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and a peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of the, offer, the offering, the burnt offering, he, 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 behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel says, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at, uh, at Michmash. Therefore said I unto the Philistines, uh, Therefore said I, The Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I, I have not made supplication. And I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. Man, Saul was a man of excuses, wasn't he? Excuse, excuse, excuse. Now, whom did he really try to blame it on first? That's Samuel. See, blaming the preacher is not a new concept, is it? <laughs> uh, and so he said, well, you, you was running to let me. I had to do something. Now, suppose the Philistines had attacked. Do you think God would have helped them? I don't know. You'd have to see, wouldn't you? I do know this. Saul wasn't faithful. Now, was it Samuel gaining the victory? Or was it God? See, uh, Saul didn't have the faith. To see, did he? Do you think that Saul's faith was in God? Or was it in Samuel? I think it must have been Samuel, don't you? Mm -hmm. I, I think it must have been, oh, if I do this sacrifice, everything's going to be fine. You know, the law, the sacrificial law was not, it was not about gaining, uh, gaining favor of God. It was about the picture of Christ that would come. It was never, never whatsoever about the sacrifice itself. itself. It was about the faith behind the sacrifice. So we find then that Saul was a man of little faith. And you know the rest of the story. From this point it went downhill and his excuses continued. Remember when they conquered that one country and uh, uh, they they kept those cows when Samuel says you kill everything on the spot. And there's a nice herd out there. He kept it. <laughs> and once again, Mr. Excuses, well, the people made me do it. Mm. Listen, uh, you'll have no excuses on Judgment Day. And we're apt to blame Mama and to blame Daddy and on and on and on we'll make it go. But the Bible says this, ye are without excuse. Yeah. So are you going to adhere to this world? Listen, uh, again, I personally believe, and it may not be true, we may go on 130 more years, 1,000 more years. I don't know. But I do know this. It's worse in the 50 years that I've lived. Right? <laughs> Standing now <laughs> is harder now than when I started the ministry 27 years ago. Remember Corona? I said we'll continue to meet. If they come in the back door, say I made you and let them arrest me. You know what? That was a very much of reality. It wasn't words. Uh, I, I told you, standing from the pulpit on two different times, <coughs> in two different times I saw a police car almost stop at the door on the road. And then finally they keep on going. Next time it'll be even more severe. And it might not be a virus then. That that 
That was test run. There'll be other things to come. And the only, the only advice I can give is get on or get off. Right? Be a Saul or be a Samuel. And when it's time to appoint someone to a judge, which in our day I think is pastor, look at them closely. Be sure they've been trained. And not that I'm <laughs> any sense the best, because probably Jarrett had better training under Brother Rich than me. But it took me a, a long time to be sure Jarrett was ready. And you know, even today, he said something to me very quietly, and I hope he gained something. That's coming. Set under the truth. Stick to the stuff because there'll be invitations to compromise. Wouldn't it be so easy to take one of these little children, even this little three-year-old, and say, honey, repeat after me. It'd be so easy, wouldn't it? And that's right. Both my girls. Sarah's an adult. She'll be 26 soon. She'd do it if I asked her. But what good would that do? We need to hold to the truth. We need to be the oddball in the last day. Don't, don't be a saw. Don't be a compromiser. 